I'm Dale Smith, and again, welcome to the Whitehead Infirmary, which is home for, of the Lynch's Lake Historical Society and Museum. Uh, we want to welcome everyone to come and visit our displays and exhibit, and use our library to learn what you can about what you see. We are right now in the Revolutionary War Room. Lynch's Lake dwells very heavily on the history of Lake City, Native American history, and Revolutionary War history in our area. And these exhibits are mainly artifacts that have been found either dug with a metal detector or dove in the rivers close to colonial Rev War period sites. There's the town of Willtown down from Mingo Bridge. And depending on who you read, if you read Reverend, Reverend Woodmason, he says it was the den of iniquity. If you read the historians, they're saying that this area of Willtown in the middle of the swamps, in the middle of the back country, that you could purchase the finest goods that you could purchase in Charleston, South Carolina. So through the digging and diving, we find out that evidently both gentlemen, the, the historians and Reverend, were, were correct because here you have crystal goblets, and here you have imported pottery from China. So evidently both both factors were correct. And when you look at some of the patterns and the dates, and it really tells a story of our first 400 years here in the United States. What we're looking at here is a display of artifacts on the bottom of Mingo and Black River and Big Pea River that just the quantity of artifacts that's on the bottom of the river to give you an insight of how much is in the ground. Everything from modern pieces to Coca-Cola cans, to pieces that are 350 years old. Up here on the top shelf, it say fragments found at Belle Isle. Belle Isle was the home of Francis Marion's brother. And these are fragments from his home. The mural in the Revolutionary War Room was completed by research by our director, Kent Daniels. It's 20, 25 years of research on Francis Marion's Patriots. If your name is in black, printed in black, you provided a service, whether it was beef to feed the armies, corn to feed the armies, ferry crossings, nobody got paid. Uh, if your name is in red, you provided a amount of time as a militia soldier. He finds these names through pension requests at the archives. And the reason for the pension request that during this time of the revolution, we weren't a country, we had no money of our own, we didn't do anything. So the services that you provided, nobody got paid. So when the war was over and we were a country and starting to get established and these pensioners were getting older, they wanted their money. So they filed for a pension. And that's how Kent has found these names. Francis Marion had a hidden camp uh, about 10 miles from here on Snows Island, which is right off of Big Pity River. And the diorama kind of displays how he and his men lived in little log huts, old raggedy canvas tents, 
and tried to plan their next event against the British, Francis Marion, getting his militia in and out of the swamps and in the rivers and from Great PD down to Santee River, and the British couldn't catch him. And that's where he got his nickname of the Swamp Fox because he was so quickly to run and hide and disappear that the British couldn't capture him. And he was never captured during the Revolutionary War. One of the highlights of South Carolina in 1999 was uh, Mel Gibson Productions came to South Carolina and used several sites across the state for the sites for the movie Patriot. And I worked with the Patriot for a short while. And these were things I'd go out after work and pick up on the battlefields. And this kind of gives you an example of this is what's been lost in 400 years. This was lost in a year.